We will now hear from Ralph Pointer, who is the head of the Lynn Stewart Defense Committee, and then Ralph will read a letter directly from prison from Lynn, who was just resentenced from the original 28 months to 10 years in prison, a death sentence. Please give a warm welcome to Ralph Pointer. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I have two brief statements. One that I wrote about Lynn's sentencing, and one from Lynn. And I'm going to read mine first, because Lynn has the bad habit of saying everything that needs to be said better than I do. <laughs> so I'm going to start with my statement, and you can look up from there. And this is on the sentencing, or the resentencing, of Lynn Stewart, called Perjury. Perjury, thy name is the United States government. The president-elect begins lying when announcing candidacy only to renege on every promise, war, health care, Medicare, economy, etc. To excuse the president, it is quoted, he or she must perjure themselves to become president. It is the understood and unstated American way, accepted perjury. When taking the oath of office, the president swears to uphold the Constitution and then proceeds to support the dismantling of the Constitution, the Patriot Act, hypocritical perjury. In office, the president employs signing, that is, after signing a bill into law, quietly signing a statement saying he will not abide by the bill. More signing since taking office than four years of Bush signings. Premeditated perjury. When Lynn Stewart was attacked by the government uh, for making a press release on the Shakes' behalf, it was revealed that other attorneys had made press releases before she did. The New York federal prosecutors of the Southern District said, they didn't know about other lawyers making press statements for the Sheikhs. The previous prosecutor of the Southern District said that other lawyers should be charged and prosecuted. The judges on the Second Circuit of Appeals admitted to selective prosecution on the part of the government, but they, the Second Circuit, would not deal with it and that Lynn Stewart should be given a longer sentence. Prosecutorial perjury. Is there anyone in this planet who does not know that the Landmarks case was hatched and paid for by the US government using an Egyptian operative named Imad Salem? Is there anyone on the planet who does not know that the FBI directed every step of this so-called plot by promising unemployed, hapless, hangers-on money to be involved? It was staged, financed, and filmed by the undercover operative, Imad Salem, with constant oversight by the FBI. They desired to discredit the blind sheikh for the Egyptian government of Hosni Mubarak, one of the most repressive in the world and a constant friend of the US government. The FBI charged the blind sheikh for not reporting the FBI operative to the FBI. The sheikh responded to Imad Salem with, I don't think this would be a good idea for Islam. No, pick a military target. Never acquiescing to a plan of Imad Salem. National security perjury. The judge first rejected the case against Lynn Stewart as being vague. Subsequently, the judge reversed himself and allowed the case to proceed. The, ju the judge allowed Osama bin Laden into the case while saying it only had to do with the state of mind of a third defendant. He allowed the massacre of Luxor Temple into the case, which happened six years previously, by a breakaway group of the Sheikh's Egyptian organization. The dramatic effect helped the government's case. Judicial perjury. I want to deal with the perjury on the part of the so-called progressive people who leap to embrace any and every petty accusation and misquote made about Lynn Stewart by the corporate media. She is arrogant. She would like to think that she would do it again and support the First Amendment. I think they call it freedom of speech. She is not remorseful. 
She would like to think that she would defend the right to have an attorney. Have we forgotten bravery, courage, Patrick Henry, Nathan Hale, John Brown, Harriet Tubman, Fannie Lou Hamer? We teach our children their statements. Have we forgotten the principles that Lynn Stewart stood for publicly and privately for 50 years? Have we forgotten We claim to be, who we claim to be, progressive people. Whose side are we on, brothers and sisters? Let us remember John Paul Jones. We have not yet begun to fight. Join us. Let us join you. Join Lynn. Join the struggle for this inclusive view of what America should be and what must become, what it must become. Thank you. Thank you again. That was the introduction, and here's the speech, a letter from Lynn. 7, 18, 10, 12, 20 p.m. Now, Lynn is an avid reader. This helps her do the time. In one of the bestsellers of this season, the heroine, Elizabeth Salander, a hardwired, brilliant young computer genius, is shot and buried by the antagonist. He is a prototype of the cruel, greedy, misogynist exploiter. She claws herself out of her premature grave, indomitable and focused, defeats him. Finally, by the end of volume three, she has triumphed using her own brains and relying on her friends and comrades over the entire corrupt corporate, governmental, military power structure that had been trying to oppress and suppress her her whole life. Last Thursday, federal judge John Cotto attempted to bury me alive. Acting for the government and judges of the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, he sentenced me at their demand to more than five times the term he originally thought right and just. With his new sentence of 10 years, I am buried in the prison industrial complex until I am nearly 80 years old, if I make it. But believe me, I, like Elizabeth Salander, intend to lift the dirt off and even if weakened and wounded, regain my voice and strength. When the National Assembly was founded and had its first conference, it too had a formidable task, to become a democratic voice of the anti-war movement. It too had to shift and move and overcome sectarianism to revive a weary, disillusioned anti-war movement. We have come a long way toward being the vibrant voice we envisioned when we had the first telephone conference. We have grown. We have tried to stay true to the notion that everyone who attended had a voice and that important policy issues and future plans must be decided by vote of the membership. I have been out of the steering aspect due to my uh, unavailability. But my husband, Ralph Pointer, is still dedicated and active. He represents both of us. Others, too numerous to mention, close to me in my previous life, also now stand for me. I miss many things from that life, but most of all, being part of the challenge to make lasting change in my lifetime by ending the scourge of imperialism and its endless wars and exploitation for ourselves and all of the peoples of the world. Long live the National Assembly. In conclusion, fight continuously and tirelessly for justice. Resist, resist, resist. Always remember the political prisoners and their commissaries, nationaljericho.org. Serve the people with honesty, kindness, and respect. Love Struggle, Lynn Stewart. Thank you. <laughs>